opportunity to speak. Today, I would like to tell you about our experiment studying what we call the anatomy of catastrophic forgetting, and specifically how it relates to internal rep network representations and the semantics of task sequences. So as we've heard a lot about today, catastrophic forgetting is an obstacle to continual learning. And there are many aspects of the problem that we still don't understand. So the idea of our work is to explore a couple of these aspects experimentally in order to begin to develop a more comprehensive understanding of catastrophic forgetting phenomenon. In particular, we wanna study two specific questions. One, what happens within a neural network when it undergoes catastrophic forgetting? For example, are the internal representations of each layer corrupted roughly equally, or are there some layers which are affected more than others? Second, we wanna understand whether there's a semantic aspect to forgetting in the sense that the semantic similarity between say previous tasks and the new tasks affect the degree of forgetting that the network experiences. So the setting in which we study these questions is image classification, specifically with the CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 datasets. And the main scenario I'm gonna discuss in this talk will be using the standard split CIFAR 10 setup in which each task consists of classifying between images comprising a subset of the full 10 CIFAR 10 categories. Now, importantly in here, in this case, the task identity is known both during training and inference. So we use a standard multi-head setup in which there's a separate readout layer for each task. Now we do study another scenario, which uses the CIFAR 100 dataset to probe for getting due to input distribution shift, but I won't have time to discuss that in this talk. So please see the paper for details or come talk to us during the poster session. We're gonna look at three network architectures, VGG, ResNet, and DenseNet, just to make sure that our conclusions aren't specific to a particular structure. So let's begin by taking a look at how network internal representations change during catastrophic forgetting. Now here is one of the splits of CIFAR 10 that we used. Here we train on task one for 30 epochs and then switch to training on task two for 30 epochs, which as you can see, causes quite a bit of forgetting in all three network architectures. So the first thing that we're gonna do to probe how internal representations are changing is to use CKA a method for comparing network representations. So we compare representations of the task one data set by each stage of the network before and after forgetting occurs. So here, higher stage numbers indicate stages closer to the output of the network. And as we can see for all <coughs> three of the networks that we studied, representations closer to the input side of the network don't actually change all that much due to training on task number two. Instead, it seems that most of the forgetting is actually driven by stages closer to the output. Now, just to emphasize, this pattern is consistent across network sizes, splits of the data set, seeds. So the lesson here really seems to be that deeper layers are driving forgetting in these networks. Now in our paper, we have several more experiments which are designed to elucidate this fact that deeper layers are primarily the source of forgetting. But in the interest of time, I'll just show one more experiment using layer resets. So in this experiment, we take the network after it's been trained on task two, we reset the parameters of various stages to their values at the end of task one, and then we evaluate the performance of the network on task one. So depending on how many layers we reset, we can go from the performance after forgetting to recovering the full performance before forgetting. But the way that we can see that it's primarily the deeper layers which drive forgetting is to look at resetting layers in two different orders. One from the deep end first, and the other from the input side first. Comparing these two orders shows that we get much better performance when resetting layers from the deep end. Again, showing this lesson that deeper layers are the ones driving forgetting. And this lesson is in fact the main takeaway from our study of internal representations. And so we wanted to see what happened to the internal representations when we tried to combat forgetting by using two popular mitigation methods. One, a replay buffer, and two, EWC or elastic weight consolidation. So these results shown here for ResNet show that as we increase either the size of the replay buffer or the strength of the EWC penalty, the primary effect on internal representations is the deeper layers are stabilized the most by both methods. So this suggests that even though these two methods come from different classes of mitigation strategies with the replay buffer being a functional regularizer and EWC being a structural regularizer, they might actually be acting in largely the same way by stabilizing representations of deeper layers. We show in the paper how it's possible to mitigate forgetting without doing this. So this is not a foregone conclusion. Okay, now let's move on to semantics, which is the second part of our study. 
uh, it turns out that this understanding of deeper layers from the previous part will be important to understand precisely how semantics affects forgetting. But before we get to that, let's start by showing a little puzzle. So let's train a network to first classify between ships and trucks, both vehicles. Then let's take that network and train it on one of two new tasks, either classifying between two animals, cats and horses, or again, classifying between two vehicles, planes and cars. So clearly the categories of plane and car are semantically much more similar to the original categories of ship and truck than are the animals. And in this case, we see that in the graph on the right, that there is significantly more forgetting when the network has to switch from classifying vehicles to classifying animals. And this pattern turns out to be consistent across networks and splits. So it really seems like we can say when subsequent tasks are more similar to one another semantically in this scenario, the network forgets less. Okay, now let's look at a slightly different scenario. Here, our initial task is four-way classification between two vehicles, ship and truck, and two animals, deer and dog. And our second task, there's only one second task this time, is to classify between plane and car, two vehicles. So now how does this second task affect the performance of the network on each of the four initial categories? Well, if you look at the graph to the right, what you can see is that the forgetting seems to cause a large drop in the network's ability to recognize the vehicles compared to the animals. So in this scenario, it seems like categories similar to those found in the second task are forgotten more than categories dissimilar from the second task. So this is the puzzle. The results of the previous two slides seem to be in tension with one another. In the first scenario, it seemed like similarity between tasks was beneficial from the perspective of forgetting, while the second task, it seemed like similarity hurt performance. So how do we resolve this tension and precisely understand the effects of semantics on forgetting? Well, the first thing we can do is try and get some intuition for what's going on by looking at a toy scenario, namely linear regression. So let's say we have some task one data which lies in a linear subspace, like the line in this 2D example on the left. Uh, and there are two key things to note in the scenario. First, the only part of the weight vector theta which affects the model's uh, prediction on the data is the component of theta which lies in the data subspace. The orthogonal components just don't affect the model predictions at all. So second, as a consequence of this fact, the gradient of the loss function with respect to theta also lies in the subspace spanned by the training data, which means that the orthogonal component doesn't change at all during gradient descent training. So let's say we take our initial model trained on task one and then train it on a second task, which is task two, then the degree of forgetting will depend strongly on the orientation between the two task subspaces. So if these tasks are nearly orthogonal, then the second task training doesn't affect the task one components of the weights and there'll be minimal forgetting. So in this linear regression case, once the features are sufficiently different from one another or orthogonal, there will be no forgetting. Now, with that in mind, let's take a model which more closely approximates what happens in real world forgetting scenarios. This one we call the frozen feature model. So in this model, we separate the network into the body, which extracts the features via this function G, and the head, which is a linear layer parameterized by theta. Now, this is essentially the same as a linear model, except that instead of taking a linear combination of data features, we take a linear combination of features G, which we extract from the data. Now, the reason that this separation is useful is that as we saw earlier, forgetting doesn't really change the representations of the input side layers very much. So to a relatively good approximation, we can approximate these features as frozen after the first task, hence the name frozen feature model. So we can use our linear model intuition, keeping in mind that we're talking about a linear model on features which were learned during the first task. So let's look at this frozen feature model in action. Again, we'll look at a two task sequence of so task one vehicles and task two animals. We use a two hidden layer feared forward network and explicitly freeze the features after the initial task. And as you can see, there's a great deal of forgetting, but the frozen feature model and the intuition from the linear regression would suggest that if we were to force the model to represent vehicles and animals orthogonally, then we could drastically reduce the degree of forgetting. And in this simple setting, we can actually do the orthogonalization quite easily simply by multiplying by a rotation matrix. And the nice thing here is that we can interpolate from no rotation, in which case the model, we saw a drop in accuracy to about 
to full orthogonalization of the respective task subspaces. And here, exactly as one would expect, based on what we just discussed, as the representations get more and more orthogonal, the model forgets less and less. So we have two main takeaways from this frozen feature model. First, extremely dissimilar tasks, meaning orthogonal model representations, don't suffer much forgetting at all. So when would we expect to see forgetting? Well, we'd expect to see it not from orthogonal tasks, nor from nearly identical tasks, but from task sequences which exhibit an intermediate degree of similarity. So the question now is, do these lessons hold in realistic scenarios? So let's see. So let's go back to the realistic networks and the same task sequence from earlier, first vehicles, then animals. Um, and here we don't freeze anything manually. We just let the natural dynamics take care of that for us. So the key point here is that if we initially just ask the model to classify between ships and trucks, then it has no pressure to represent vehicles and animals orthogonally or differently. Meaning that we can see, and in fact do see, significant forgetting when we train on the animals task. Now to show that this is actually the problem, we can instead add a third category to the initial task, which we call the other category, which consists of all of the rest of the CIFAR 10 categories. And the idea is that this other category forces the model to represent vehicles differently than other objects. And in theory, this should cause the model to forget less when trained on animals. So the graph on the right shows that this is in fact the case. When we add the other category, forgetting gets significantly less severe. Just like the rotation example from a few slides ago, orthogonalizing representations using the other category can, mitigating, can mitigate forgetting. Now let's test the prediction the other prediction from our frozen feature model, namely that intermediate similarity between tasks causes maximal forgetting. So the setup is the same as before. We use this other category, but now we can vary what task two is uh, by varying this parameter that I've called epsilon. So essentially what this parameter does is it linearly interpolates task two between the cat horse task and the ship truck task. So when epsilon is zero, we have the pure animals task. And when epsilon is one, we have purely the vehicles task, meaning there's no difference between task one and task two. And in this setup, when we look at how forgetting varies with epsilon, there's clearly a regime where epsilon is roughly 0.2 that causes maximal forgetting. Meaning that if we start increasing the similarity between task two and task one by injecting a bit of task one data into the task two training set, then this first causes forgetting to get worse and then causes it to get better. So just as we thought, maximal forgetting is indeed caused by intermediate task similarity. So armed with this knowledge, we can go back to our initial puzzle and explain it using what we've just learned. So at the top, I show the two graphs from earlier. And at the bottom, I show our cartoon, exam, a cartoon explanation of what's going on. And let me just emphasize that this is just a cartoon. So in setup one, when we initially only trained the model on vehicles. There was no pressure to represent animals and vehicles differently because we'd never seen animals before the task two. So here we lie on sort of the low similarity part of the curve and thus the increasingly dissimilar animal representation causes more forgetting than the similar vehicles uh, representations. But in setup two with the initial four class classification, here there was pressure on the model to represent animals and vehicles differently so now training on vehicles didn't affect the orthogonal uh, animal representations as much, but it did affect the less orthogonal vehicles representations quite a bit. So with that, let me conclude. Again, the two high level takeaways from our investigation are that one, the deepest hidden representations of the model are the ones most corrupted by forgetting, at least in this image classification setting that we've studied here. Uh, and two, there's a definite relationship between task semantics and forgetting, and the worst forgetting performance is seen for task sequences of intermediate similarity. So for more details on all of this, more experiments, uh, more models, please see our paper, which is out on archive now. And with that, let me thank you very much for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, please come stop by our virtual poster. We would love to talk to you.